Hello everyone, thanks for joining me on the other episode here on Eat Sleep Reef. This week we're gonna be talking about pH in your reef tank. Now we're not gonna get into the full details as far as pH, exactly what it does and the full science behind it. In a nutshell, I think we've all heard a lot of people, especially people that keep SPS dominant tanks, speak about how important it is to maintain a higher pH. Higher pH is thought to help corals calcify quicker, grow quicker, not sure about coloring up, but certainly growth for sure. It tends to help them. Also, BRS has done a few videos on running higher pH levels and the results were actually pretty cool. I've also recently noticed quite a bit YouTubers out there, Reef Dudes, a few others, specifically targeting and having issues with lower pH in the reef tank. I think a lot of this has to do with COVID more of us being at home, more of our family members being inside the house, which leads to more oxygen being consumed, more carbon dioxide being put out, which means lower pH levels in a reef tank. I think we know there is some acceptable ranges when it comes to pH. I've heard people have decent success or good success depending on who you're asking, maintaining low pHs as low as 7.8 and generally as about as high as 8.1. I've also seen Jake Adams reef builders as far as most of the tanks, if not all the tanks in his shop, he actually tries to shoot for 8.4 to 8.5, which is generally when you hear about those, you're like, well, that's kind of ridiculous, but he swears by it. I mean, the results it themselves should speak for themselves. So I can totally see why he tries his best to maintain as high as a pH as he does. So I think a lot of us can agree that higher pHs they may not guarantee success, but they can certainly help our corals, help them calcify quicker, more importantly, helping them grow quicker. I think a lot of people ask themselves, okay, so I get it that having a higher pH is better for my reef tank, but how in the heck do I even start to implement this? In this video, I wanna show you guys a few different methods, a few different ways you can shoot for having a higher pH. Maybe you could implement some of these in your reef tank, especially if you've been having a hard time with your pH levels being a little bit too low. One of the first ways I think it's widely agreed upon to increase your pH oxygen exchange in your reef tank is very simply put your return nozzles or power heads pointed to the surface so they agitate the water, thus causing more oxygen exchange, which is gonna lead to a higher pH in your reef tank. That's one that's very easy, easy to implement. If you have a reef tank at home, almost positive you have a return nozzle and almost positive you have some sort of wave maker. So all you really gotta do is point them toward the surface, get some agitation, you should be good to go. Another way, specifically if you have a refugium, running your refugium opposite of your light schedule is gonna help you maintain a more consistent BH so your highs aren't too high and your lows aren't too low. Method number three that I personally haven't used, but I've seen a few people have good success with it, is run the airline hose going to the skimmer to either attic, which I don't think that'll be too good because there's a lot of dust particles in there and other stuff. It may be better than maybe having it where you have it now, but I don't know if I'd be a big fan of that one. Or the other option is drill a hole into your wall, go into the outside of the home, have the skimmer pull in fresh air from the outside. Now there may be some other issues you'll encounter with that, such as obviously your significant other being a little bit upset of you drilling a hole in the wall and maybe, and them not being too happy with that. But I have heard this method producing some really great results. So it may be something worth trying. Another method that also involves your inlet, air inlet for your skimmer is running a CO2 scrubber. So you'd have the CO2 scrubber coming from the intake, the air intake on your skimmer, have it be plugged into your CO2 scrubber, which is then gonna help actually quite drastically your pH. This is one of them that I've seen that really affects the pH along with a few others I'll be mentioning. But if you're having issues and you've tried maybe the others, a CO2 scrubber I've actually heard people have great success with. The only thing with this method is you do have to change out the media uh, once it does get exhausted. But guess what? If it's for a higher pH, it may be very well worth it. Another great way to do it is there's different types of two-part, at least if you're talking about two-part from bulk resupply, specifically for the alkalinity, is using soda ash. Soda ash is known to increase pH slightly more than any other two-part methods out there. So if that's a route you wanna try, you can totally try it, especially if you're using two-part, it can certainly help. Now, one of the last methods, and actually the method I'm gonna be using, I think this is by far one of the most used methods for increasing pH, is using 
Kalkwasser. There's two ways this could be implemented. It can either be implemented with you putting Kalkwasser in your auto top off, or like myself, having a calc stir that makes sure it's always in solution, make sure it's, a, it's potent and it gets dosed into your reef tank. The good thing with Kalkwasser, it doesn't only cover pH, it increases your alkalinity, increases your calcium, it consumes phosphates, it replaces your auto top off. I mean, there's tons of benefits with Kalkwasser that if you're willing to give it a go, I think it's a good option to go with and it's maybe why you see so many people use Kalkwasser. Kalkwasser in and of itself, when it's in solution, it actually has a pH of 12. So you can see when that's being dosed into your tank, how that can really help out especially if you're having issues with low pH. Now, one of the last things I wanted to cover, it kind of isn't really related to how to increase or maintain a pH, but it's how to test pH. Make sure you have a good test kit. I personally use the Hanna Checker test kit for pH. Also, if you have a controller, Apex, GHL, uh, tons of other controllers out there that have a pH pro where you can monitor it, you wanna make sure you have a reliable pH tester where you can actually monitor it see if what you're doing is working, see if it's not working, see if something works better than something else, and you can better implement it in your reef tank. So guys, that's gonna be it for this video. I know there's a few other methods that I didn't talk about, but I just really wanted to cover some of the more common ones, also the ones that aren't that difficult and probably you can start implementing today. So guys, I'm gonna leave this video here. I'd love to hear down in the comments box below what methods you've used, what works for you, Maybe some, one of us watching this video can pick, pick something new up from you. So be sure to leave down in the comment box below what method you used or have used that worked for you. So hopefully someone can implement it. So yeah, guys, any questions, comments, concerns, leave them down in the comment box below. I thank each and every one of you very much for watching. As always, happy reefing.